as you all can see based on my outfit, it's finally here. The Thanos, well, okay, not Thanos, the Elizabeth Holmes lawsuit is finally here. We can finally see her put on trial and people get the justice they deserve. So I'll be watching a Wall Street Journal recap, per se, of what's going to happen. Hope you guys enjoy. And the community has is, does this work? If you believe that it does, I'd like to hear you say I, I that. I know it does. Okay. This is Elizabeth Holmes. Six years ago, she was one of the most celebrated CEOs in Silicon Valley. Her biotech startup Theranos, which promised to revolutionize blood testing, was once valued at more than $9 billion. Yeah, in all honesty, most doctors looked at this and call, called bullshit. That's why Ms. Holmes never really had any medical professionals on her board of directors. And Forbes hailed her as the youngest self-made female billionaire. Yeah, given Forbes' record of identifying billionaires, it's... <laughs> It's kind of embarrassing, to be honest. They made this mistake multiple times, and putting um, Elizabeth Holmes on the cover of Forbes has actually made it much tougher for female entrepreneurs to go up in this world. Now everyone expects every every brilliant young woman or older woman who comes across the door to be a scam, to be the next Elizabeth Holmes, not the next Steve Jobs. But then Theranos' well-crafted story began to fall apart. Just days before Holmes took to the stage, at this 2015 conference, the Wall Street Journal published two articles that cast serious doubts on the effectiveness of Theranos' technology. Do you feel now, in hindsight... Yeah, okay. In all honesty, the technology didn't really make sense. How could you conduct at least a dozen blood tests using a tiny prick of your blood, a tiny drop of your blood? It doesn't logically make sense. Yeah, I don't have a medical background and I, I call bullshit on this. That Maybe you went to market a little too quickly. We're the exact same company that we were last Wednesday before these two articles were published. Nothing has changed just because some guy... Yeah, so the thing is, she's not exactly lying. The company hasn't changed. It was a scam before and was a scam after the investigation. Allegedly. She hasn't been... She hasn't been... She hasn't been proven guilty yet, but I'm quite sure where, where, it's gonna end, where this is going to end up reports false stuff about us doesn't mean that it changes our business. We knew she was blatantly prevaricating and it's interesting that the government has used many of the facts that we uncovered in our stories as a basis for the criminal complaint that's now pending against uh, Elizabeth. Today, Theranos has been dissolved and Holmes faces a federal indictment of 12 different... Okay, Ramesh Balwani was the other, I don't know, CEO, CEO, I don't know what to call, I don't know his exact designation, but he was uh, yeah, he and Holmes had an intimate relationship and he kind of ran the company as well. Different charges, two counts of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and 10 counts of wire fraud. The case has two parts. Prosecutors allege she defrauded both investors who gave hundreds of millions of dollars to Theranos and also patients who paid for tests. And to be honest, evidence seems to be indicating that everything's alleged, okay? Nothing's been proven yet. So don't quote me on it. Now, with her trial about to begin, Oh crap, what happened to a drip? I like the black drip. And on August 31st, we revisit Theranos' story and Holmes' fall from grace to understand what we can expect from a case that is shaping up to be one of the crap, biggest okay. trials in recent years. The woman who I will be interviewing needs no introduction. First they think you're crazy, then they fight you. Oh yeah, deep, by the way, her deep voice was fake. It's been proven. He has an ordinary sounding voice, but he deepened it to seem a bit more intimidating. And then all of a sudden you change the world. Almost every media outlet, including us here at CBS, bought into the Theranos myth. Breaking news right now, Elizabeth Holmes is stepping down as CEO of Theranos. The Theranos saga has been one of Silicon Valley's biggest scandals. And not, not the last. I'll just put it out there. I've been in the startup field for some time and I can guarantee that this won't be the last large-scale scandal. And as such, it's attracted a lot of attention. To date, the Theranos story has been chronicled in a best-selling book, an HBO documentary, a podcast. Uh, the thing about HBO documentaries is, even though they're trying to... F I mean, any documentary is talking about your life criminals. Is, okay, let's take Tiger King as an example. He talked about some of the most he heinous individuals in the United States, but it ends up creating a cult flaw following for them. So in this case, I don't know, Holmes may be seen as somewhat of a hero, even though he did terrible stuff. And two still-to-come Hollywood adaptations. What the fuck? Seriously, you shouldn't... 
you know, the thing about movies is, sure, they're, they're, they might have a good message, but they inadvertently end up glorifying these con men or con women, for, for example, in this case. Before the journal stories, Elizabeth was a darling of Silicon Valley. She was, um, you know, viewed as um, the, potentially the next Steve Jobs. Theranos promised to revolutionize blood testing with a new technology that could diagnose everything from cholesterol to HIV using only a few drops of blood. We'd like okay, if it's too good to be true, it probably isn't true. Just keep that in mind next time someone comes up with an inven invention like this. I'd like to see a world in which every person gets access to this type of basic testing. From an early age... Oh, holy shit, the lack of blinking is scaring me right now. I, I might have blinked like five times already and she hasn't blinked even once. Elizabeth Holmes' uh, aspirations to be an engineer. I first met her when she came to my office uh, when she was a freshman at Stanford and I believe it was the first. Okay, the first thing is, okay, yeah, sure, you have a couple of college dropouts who make it big, but the first thing I know about startups is if it's a college student, don't take them on it. As a venture capital, if you're a venture capitalist, don't take them seriously because they don't know shit, they're new, they're optimistic, they don't understand the industry. Tell them to go back to school, finish their degree, and then come back. Fall of 2002. In this deposition interview, one of Holmes's earliest backers, Stanford University professor Channing Robertson. And poor guy got finished. I actually feel bad for him. A bright student came there, he uh, dragged him into something that's clearly illegal, and look at him now. Recall that by the next year, Holmes had decided to drop out and launch Theranos. She asked me if I would be on her board, and I said yes. Big mistake, bro. Big mistake. Holmes started Theranos in 2003 after dropping out as a 19-year-old sophomore. Over yeah. Okay, when it comes to, let's say, software, you can, a young person can do it well. You don't need much experience. You need talent. You need, ma you need creativity and so on. When it comes to medical, the medical industry, it's quite different. You, ne you need hands-on experience before you go, go about and launch a large-scale company, especially when you put people's lives on the line. Like, a blood test can identify, let's say, a blood test in, of a HIV, a person who has HIV. Like, yeah, you can, if you identify it early, you can get them the treatment they need at the earliest, thereby saving their lives. However, if you make some mistake, their lives are in your hand. So just think about that before you start a medical startup. Over the next 12 years, she raised hundreds of millions from investors, and Theranos is... Yeah, for a company that has it doesn't have a working proven product, which is... That speaks a lot about our current startup culture. Valuation ballooned to more than $9 billion. Two former secretaries of state, Henry Kissinger and George Schultz, yeah, she managed to finesse these two gentlemen. Some of, the, some of the greatest strategists in the world. Like Kissinger, I've read some of his books, they're great. His insight into for, diplo diplomacy and politics is quite fascinating. Yeah, I know I'm going on a tangent, but he's one of my favorite authors, even though personally I, I'm not really fond of him, but as an expert, I respect him. We're members of the board of directors. And how did you first uh, become involved with Theranos? Uh, Secretary Schultz mentioned um, the company <clears throat> that... The interesting thing is, like, normally when you're going to run a scam, you, you con, let's say, two, two powerful people at most. He, on the other hand, other hand con nearly every other powerful person in the family. I think the divorce family, like, you know, Betsy Divorce's family was involved in this as well. Let's just see. Um, he reached out shortly maybe several years after I left the Senate. In this deposition taken in a civil case brought by investors, former Theranos board member and former Senate Majority Leader Bill Frist recalled the first time he met Elizabeth Holmes. They had a box there, a machine there, and told the history. Okay, the magic machine. Yeah, the thing is, if you don't have a technical background, you'll fall for this, okay? I'm not blaming this guy over here. I understand how he fell for it, but as a per as an engineer myself, yeah, I'm bragging. With a clean, uh, with no criminal record, I can I can find I can, I'm not gonna believe that some magical box exists. Yeah, you know it kind of feels good, even though I I, I didn't come on the on the Forbes magazine. I'm an engineering graduate. I didn't come on the Forbes magazine, but unlike Elizabeth Holmes here, I don't have a criminal record, and I completed my degree. So in a way, I feel more successful than her. And, um, 
of her individual history and of the okay, state. When, okay, when they say history, it's because of her family. Her family was quite powerful. I think her dad was involved in, what was that company again? It was, uh, I think that was even a scam as well. The apple doesn't really fall really far from the tree, does it? ...age of the company at that point. Uh, do uh, remember actually at that meeting doing a finger prick the technology and the results came back at that meeting. So you did test... Yeah, dude, the results can be fake. Yeah, but then again, this guy most probably had an um, education background in law. So I understand his... I don't know, how do I describe it? I understand his ability to get on these things. The technology right at that first meeting. Yes. And it was analyzed right there and then? Yes. And the results were given to you? Yes. Right there and then. Investors like the Walton family and Rupert Murdoch. But the fucking Walton family got caught in this shit. Doc, exactly. Murdoch, dude, she has like a all-star invest investment firm, investment banking. Executive chairman of News Corp, the journal's parent company, each invested over one hundred million dollars. Others, like former education secretary. Okay, yeah, the DeVos family, as I mentioned. Betsy DeVos's family invested one hundred million dollars. Wasn't General Matters also kind of dragged into the board? I'm not Mexican sure. tycoon Carlos Slim invested. Oh, Car oh damn! Even Carlos Slim got dragged into this shit. It's not just an all-star American group. It's it even has the Mexicans involved. Well, wow. thirty million dollars. If this technology truly worked, it could have um, upended the the entire blood testing industry. It could have made them a lot of money. But after the publication of two Wall Street Journal articles in October 2015, Holmes's claims began to unravel. You're now at the point where you're only testing for one thing, herpes, using your proprietary technology. And in all honesty, even the herpes test didn't work. So what they did was, from what I've heard, they diluted that one prick of blood with water and ran it through standard commercially available machines, which, as you guys could guess, came up with not so accurate results. Technology, is that correct? Not correct. Um, and there's a lot of different elements of our work that have been conf uh, conflated through these two pieces. The journal reported that Theranos wasn't using its own technology for the vast majority of its tests. Yeah, as I stated earlier. It was instead using commercially available machines. The company's Edison machine, the lab instrument touted as the linchpin of its strategy, handled just a small fraction of tests that were sold to consumers, and former employees told the journal the accuracy of Edison's tests was poor. So if I went... I would say the accuracy is non-existent. Because, you know, you can't do much with a small prick of blood. Let's be, let's be honest here. To one of the centers, and I got a pinprick, mm -hmm. um, and I only gave that much blood, mm -hmm. right? What tests are yeah. you currently able to perform for that blood using anything other than commercially available lab equipment? So we have never used commercially available lab equipment? Lady, just answer the goddamn question. Come on, she's... Uh... Okay, as you guys can figure out, I'm not really fond of this bitch. Yeah, I called her that. For finger stick based tests. Okay. Every finger stick test that we have ever done uses proprietary Theranos technology that is not commercially available. Well, it sounds... And uh, the thing about her is she's really good at avoiding questions. It sounded great for her to say that they uh, never used third-party commercially available um, blood testing technology. Unfortunately, it's not grounded in the facts. In this 2018 deposition interview, former Theranos product manager Daniel Edlin recalled a company meeting in which the use of third-party analyzers was discussed. I heard discussion about certain Theranos tests being lab-developed tests that were run on third-party machines. Okay, another thing about Elizabeth Holmes was she was extremely toxic in the workplace. Her employees hated her. Like she kept us in this highly competitive and a big brother like workplace where everyone was spied upon, no one had no one had the same. So when you like in that case, come on her, she's not gonna have the loyalty of her subordinates when push comes to shove. And that's what happened. Moral of the story is don't be a bitch to your subordinates or your employees or whatever or your peers. Just don't be a bitch to anyone. I'll sum it up. A 2016 journal article found that Theranos failed to maintain basic safeguards to ensure consistent results. What's oh. 
It's more because of the company's many questionable tests, some patients adjusted the amount of medicine they were taking. Others... Okay, that's extremely dangerous. And that's what I was uh, talking earlier about. The healthcare industry having a resp moral responsibility to make sure that their customers don't get, you know, you don't con your customers. Actually, you don't con your customers anywhere. But when it comes to the healthcare industry, it's not just money that's on the line. It's people's lives that are on the line. And it's, it's extremely disgusting to see people, you know, take advantage of that. Putting people's lives on the lines for their own personal ego, that's, that's horrendous. It's disgusting. And it's, you know, it's inhuman. It's like breast cancer survivor Sherry Eckert panicked, as seen here in this 2016 Wall Street Journal video. I hope she got out of this alive. When I went online. Yeah, it's good she got out of it alive. I'm happy to hear I that. I got the results. Um, I printed them off. It looks like they're normal. And then I thought, I better go back and look at that again. Okay, what's the range, the reference range? And I noticed that it's for premenopausal women. Okay, well, that's not me. Eckert, who could be called to testify in the trial, received blood test results from Theranos that showed estrogen levels many times higher than is normal for a postmenopausal woman. Yeah, it's, 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 this actually disgusts me. Uh, no, they should give the h highest possible sentence for Elizabeth Holmes. She deserves it. Okay, I'm going to say it. She deserves to fucking rot in jail. Her oncologist told the journal a high estrogen level could cause cancer to recur or could be a sign of a rare tumor. Either they th they made a mistake, they tested somebody else's blood, or their controls don't. The truth is, I think they most probably just randomly give some values to this poor lady's report. They just put some random values on a report. And, it, and you know, if the things didn't work out as they did, I, I'm happy that she's fine. Things didn't work out as she did, as it did, she might be dead. And her blood is on Theranos's hand. And God knows how many people like this didn't get away, didn't survive. Uh, Don't work, or I have a tumor somewhere. Great. The patients were the pawns in all this. Many of them who had gotten tests, and the tests seemed to be wildly off, they would sometimes have repeated tests at Theranos, and then when those were, were wildly off, they would go to a traditional, you know, Quest or lab. Yeah, that's good. They went to a certified professional lab. That's what saved them. When they complained, oftentimes they would not get any kind of a response. So you have no concerns about where you are today. What we've done for the last few days is listen, right? And try to understand what are the questions that the community... Let me try my, uh, my Elizabeth uh, Holmes uh, talk. <laughs> we gave our concerns as it is. We care about our customers. Did I make it, guys? Was it good? He has, and we've been preparing material to be able to answer that for them because that that matters hugely to me. Well, I think At this event, Holmes promised to She lied as she breathes. Well, published data proving the accuracy of Theranos's more than 240 tests. But Theranos was never able to provide that data. The records of the millions of blood tests that Theranos performed were stored on a database, but in 2018, Theranos employees dismantled the servers containing the original database. I has just destroy all the evidence that could implicate him. It seems like that. Base. Meanwhile, prosecutors didn't realize for months that a copy they received was missing a necessary encryption code. At this point, neither the government nor Theranos or Elizabeth Holmes have access to this database anymore. Kind of extraordinary that it just sort of disappeared. Prosecutors believe... Kind of convenient for her, isn't it? <laughs> that even without the database, a successful prosecution can be carried out with the anecdotal evidence available. Holmes's defense team has argued that without this database and broader data, prosecutors shouldn't be able to call patients and doctors to the stand who said they got inaccurate test results. So they've put a lot of stake in this lost database. Prosecutors first indicted Holmes and former Theranos executive Ramesh Sani Balwani in June 2018. Holmes settled it's been like three years, right? Civil charges filed by the SEC in 2018. Prosecutors say that... I think one of, our pun uh, one of the terms of you know, the conviction, the civil conviction, was that she was she's not allowed to serve as an, a board member or a C-suite a member, as like a CEO, CEO, or CTO of any company. But I don't think that's punishment enough. From 2010 to 2015, in investor pitches that Elizabeth Holmes did, she basically told investors that they had this revolutionary technology, but they say that in reality that wasn't true and she knew it. Prosecutors say...
I have to be honest, like she's the person who claimed to have invented this revolutionary technology. So if it didn't, if it didn't work, she was, she was clearly obvious of it. And we know, based on pre- previous lawsuits, that the technology didn't work. So I'm not saying that she didn't know. I'm just saying it's highly likely that she didn't know that the technology didn't work. Please don't sue me. The investors were told Theranos would generate over $100 million in revenue in 2014. What? And- <laughs> okay, like... I know I'm not, I'm not you know, diverting from the topic again. When, and this is from my personal experience, when you have startups coming up with their projected earnings, just half that or quarter that or divide that by 100 because they in most cases, they, pitch, they tend to pitch extremely optimistic values which won't realistically happen. Trust me on that. And that Theranos had lucrative contracts with the Department of Defense that didn't did they? Exist. Oh, oh yeah, it didn't exist. In the indictment, prosecutors point to six specific wire transfers from unnamed investors that they say were the result of allegedly fraudulent acts. Were they involved in money laundering as well now? Let me see. Including a nearly $100 million deposit to a Theranos account sent in October 2014. Intent is what matters and showing that someone intended to deceive. And- okay, th- okay, th- they were... Transferring the money from their account to investors' account to somewhere else, okay, they're trying to, okay, there's this trick what that I've noticed with startups is they'll try to, you know, get the money to move around accounts to make sure that the investment thinks that, yeah, the money's being used for something apart from, you know, filling someone's pockets, but it's actually filling someone's pockets. And so if Elizabeth Holmes' lawyers can say that she believed in the technology, that could be one line of defense. Really? Okay. It's like saying, Your Honor. I thought that this gun won't shoot someone if I pull the trigger. I don't think it's a valid defense. Okay, I'm not a lawyer. Maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe there are some intrinsic, there are some, you know, underla- underlying m- meaning behind laws. But this kind of sounds to me as in, I accidentally shoot someone, or I purposely shoot someone, thinking it's a joke. And, I'm, uh, and I bring the defense. Your Honor, I, I, I was unaware that the gun was loaded. Would that work in court? It's, it's up to you. What do you guys think? Just put that in the co- comments down below. Elizabeth Holmes's lawyers could also argue um, that all Silicon Valley startups embellished to investors and that what Theranos did was no different. Oh, this is like, Your Honor, everyone's equally shit, so you should let me go. Yeah, okay, I don't know about the legal thing, maybe she can get away with it, but from a moral perspective, this is like a really dirty tactic. It's unclear if Holmes will testify in the trial, or what the defense's strategy will be. To me, the most interesting element is Elizabeth Holmes going to testify on her own behalf. I mean, it's always the big question. And I tend to doubt it, but you know, uh, it, it's unclear. We don't know that. We also don't know who definitively the witnesses are going to be. Choosing an important... Yeah, it's going to be an interesting case. Okay, it's going to be an interesting case, but... Oh, one thing I know, I know about quotes are, they're fucking boring, okay? It's not as interesting as what they show in the movies. It's extremely boring. Partial jury is expected to be a major undertaking because of the substantial coverage Theranos has. Oh yeah, the jury thing. You have to find people who are unbiased, and as you can see, I'm clearly biased, and I'm not an American citizen, so I won't be serving the jury. But my point is, there might be people who are equally biased as I am against Elizabeth Holmes. Does she deserve it? Personally, yeah, from my personal perspective, yes. But would I serve the jury by a chance? No, I'd recuse myself because I'm already biased. I already made up my mind. And I'm quite sure most of the people in the, who are aware of this case, that's like, I don't know, I guess that's like most of the Ameri- most of the eligible American population, are the same boat as me. As in, they would recuse themselves because they know that they'll be biased, even though they want Holmes convicted, they want it done the right way. So yeah, finding a jury is going to be, the, be a pain. It's going to be something like the O.J. Simpson's case. Received. I think it could take a while and, and be an intensive process to pick the jury. Elizabeth Holmes's side is very concerned about finding jurors that aren't already prejudiced against her and the company. I think they could just get a couple of rednecks from the woods, you know, one of those, yeah, I'm, I'm sounding racist, I'm, I, I'm, I'm like talking about one of those people who live in bunkers, but you know, stockpiling guns, I'm quite sure they haven't heard of her. Bring them up as a jury and let's see how it plays out. Holmes has pleaded not guilty. Each wire fraud count carries a maximum prison sentence of 20 years. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to be honest here. Unless she gets a really good plea deal, she's going to plead not guilty. That's how it works. All right. Anyway, that was my rant.
Okay, my wordings in the introduction was pretty bad. I I'm quite sure none of you really enjoyed this video because it dealt with kind of heavy stuff. Anyway, if you want to watch more like this, how about giving a like and subscribing? And I hope that, you know, her, her trial makes the world a better place. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.